this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Kitchen time. This is the, um, the last three that are marked in red in all of my Oncidium types. So these are the last three. Now one I've had for a long time and it, it's doing something very silly. So this was one that I've already repotted once, um, which is a Hamilton Ara with one of my best looking blooms, which I haven't seen for ages. Um, it's got roots, so it's not a root problem, but what it is, is it's pushed up a new growth in the center of an existing growth. So I'm not quite, the roots can't get out, so that new growth up in there can't produce roots. However, this one can. So although it's only already got roots, this growth is starting to push out some new ones. So now's a good time to change the media, which is old. So the reason that one's getting done is the media is old. Even though it's my own and I repotted it, it don't last forever. So that's that one. Now this one came from Burnham's and the latest two growths have decided not to spike. Which given that they're reasonable sized bulbs, they're plump, is odd which always makes me think the plant isn't quite happy. So non-happy plant, check what's in the pot. Now this is um, Caraforum. Um, Lynn's got a smash of, smashing one of these. Um, I've got this out of the private area. These don't normally come up for sale. Um, so we had to scrounge this one. And um, this has never been repotted since I got it. So it was potted by Burnham's. So, you know, I don't know what's going on with that one. So that's the reason that one's coming out, unknown media. Now this one, this was a gift from Zena, and this is some um, Chrysomorphum, another Oncidium species. And it chucked out loads and loads of blooms. And I think, quite honestly, it totally exhausted itself. It has got a pot full of roots, and I have repotted this once, but it's in the old Orchiata bark and it's got moss in with it. So I want the moss out. And basically this bloomed several spikes on all of these old pseudo bulbs. And I think it's just become exhausted. Um, it's only got a single new growth, no sign of new root yet, but they will come soon. So this just needs a clean up really and some fresh media and <clears throat> this dries ultra fast and even though it's drinking the pseudo bulbs are starting to desiccate slightly this one's okay um, but the really older ones are not no, not so good so that one's coming out of media because it's got moss in and it's and again it's been in there quite a while so those are the three um, Right, I'm just going to break off now because there's something missing. You'll, you'll realise what it is when it magically appears. And with the magic of technology, <laughs> called, the, called the pause button. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I do not normally do this sort of thing in the morning. It's normally afternoon, sometimes quite late in the afternoon. But uh, I want to get these out of the way, basically. So um, you too can have one of those. Um, yeah, so it's, this is just quick really, there's nothing much to, to say or do. Yeah, that smells of mushrooms, so that, that is old, old and tired. And we do have new roots coming from this little new growth, so now's a good time to get at this one. And it's it had moss, so you know, let's get the moss out, that's probably why it's a bit smelly. Um, the trouble is when I lost my um, information, um, you know, when the laptop crashed, I lost a lot of data uh, in my notes. Um, the only thing I've got about this is it was repotted in 2019. You know, a lot of these roots are dead. Many are dead. Uh, but we do have some new ones with some life in them up here. So uh, hopefully they, it's a branching root system. Hopefully these, these will get into some media. And then we have a decision. Is that a decision to take that off? No, that's not a decision. That's a must. Because <laughs> if it's not rotten yet, it will be soon. 
It's still hard actually, but with colours like that, it's going to go. So it's now gone. Let's see if any hassles later down the line. Ah, that's nice to see. There's actually another new growth there. Uh, hopefully, with the sheath off, that will push on now. Sees the, now that it can see the light of day. So if I can get a new growth both sides, do you know that's a third one? So this is being strange. This is up to no good. <laughs> but the no good it's up to is a bonus rather than a downside. I'll trim a few of these dead roofs off, but we've got a new growth here, another one here. Potentially both of those will push on. Now they can see daylight. And we've got a new growth already started here what this growth is going to do down in the middle there. I mean, you can see it's, a, it's an entire new growth down in the centre of the plant, complete with root system. I bet I could actually take that out and plant it on. I'm not going to. <laughs> it decided to do that. It can live with it. So that's plant number one. I'll trim a few roots. And um, these are all going to get hydrogen peroxide. Um, old media, potentially there are mould spores. But no sign of scale on that one. That's good. I'm surprised. <laughs> Oncidium type. A lot of my Oncidiums have. So that's one. And a good little pot too. Look after that one. Shallow, wide. Good pot that. Right. Then we've got the uh, Chrysomorphum. Again, moss in the pot. Oh, this media is very old. This is not good. Oh, smelling too. So although it's got a pot full of roots, these are not new roots. They're not active roots at all. So I'm relying on that new growth pushing some out. I've got a couple of roots around here, not many, and quite a solid root mass. When this was repotted, when this plant arrived from Zena, it had no roots and I potted it up and it grew a massive amount of roots and filled the pot. And then those roots just stopped and started to turn brown and these are probably still active roots in as much as they will hydrate the plant and it's a branching root system and some of these are highly likely to start growing again. Hello, cat. Um, yeah, so it's a matter of these old sections of roots over here can go. Um, that bulb can go, that one, especially as it's black around the bottom. It also gives me... Uh, don't worry about the tattiness, these will get cleaned up. There they are. I had a feeling I might have some on this plant. Best way to kill scale on a bulb, rub them off and squash them. And don't miss any. Clean the bulb. Like that. Any the other side? Yep. Always down under the sheath. Especially where there's an old flower spike. That's their favourite little place. Between the bulbs, just a few. Question is, are they on any other bulbs? See, these are adults. Those are adult scale. They're just coming off effortlessly, so the chances are they're dead. Chances are I've sprayed this at some point. We're okay on the uh, newer bulbs, but um, yeah, they're around on this plant. Down here, again, old flower spike. No, not really. A couple. I'll have to seriously worry about anyway. So with this one we've got our new growth. That's where I'm hoping the new roots will come from. Um, tidy up some roots. Hydrogen peroxide because of the smelly media. It could be mould spores. And just tidy up that rhizome where I snapped it off when cutting it with scissors would have been a better idea. But you can always trim them up later. All sheaths removed and lower leaves like that, just in case. See, you know, that, that one's okay, and then we'll run with that. Okay, that's that one. And last but not least, I don't know what's in this pot. The other two were my 
you know, I potted those, but this can, this has come from Burnham, so it's probably got um, the polystyrene, polystyrene um, packing chips in the bottom. They use those a lot. Yep, there we go. Now I have to go careful here because um, these have to be kept separate because they can't go in the um, green recycling bin because they're not green. So we just put those to one side so we don't get them in the wrong bin because those are not recyclable and then what have we got very loose mix of Burnham's bark with a bit of moss mixed in not a lot and moss growing on the top now moss growing on the top of a Burnham's plant is quite a natural thing um, because they have so much moss in the um, in the growing areas that the spores are always getting, you know, overhanging baskets with moss, getting watered from above. The spores, the moss spores, get spread around the nursery very easily and um, will get onto virtually every pot. But it is a sign that they've been in the pot a while, as this one has. And we've got two plants here. naturally gonna it's just the roots holding those two together so two pieces have been put in there um, luckily there's a new growth on each piece so we're still working with um, something sensible that little one can come off leaving me with quite a tidy little plant there three bulbs progressing larger each time no new growths as yet active root system not bad yeah, uh, can't complain at a root system like that, but we will still give it a bit of a clean up, get the moss out under the tap, and there's a few dead ones to come off on this oldest bowl, basically. So not too bad, not too bad. I suspect, in fact, I will put both of these pieces back in the same pot. There's no point in having two pots. I often wonder with Burnham's they don't take the sheaths off they don't clean them up and when you get um, a media that with the best of intentions might stay a little bit wetter than perhaps is wanted you're asking for rot to form especially when you start getting moss around the base of the plant as well because you've got a sheath that can hold water right at the base of the plant there's the new growth just showing so this this one well, I hope it is. can't see what else it could be, but it's not in a... <laughs> Bearing in mind, this is the latest growth. Oh well, take what you get. If that is a new growth, great. Not quite so many roots left on this one. Um, it seems odd that the new growths on both of these plants don't have new roots coming out from underneath them. So maybe the new roots come on the old growth as the new growth pushes on. That is a trait on some orchids and still no sign of any spikes. So those are the three. Um, not too bad, not too bad. I've certainly had far worse root systems on oncidium types and um, I can certainly live with what I've got there. So, uh, right, we will get this lot thrown away, get some media sorted out and get them in their pots. We've been running 10 minutes. I'll do it all in one video this time. Okay, uh, as requested, camera in a bit closer. Some people have said the camera's too far away and they can't see what I'm doing. I'll bring it in closer, which means every now and again the plant will be out off the camera, I expect, but we'll see what we can do. Obviously didn't have much of a break this time. Coffee's only just got cold. Right, this is a mix of the Burnham's large and small, sorry, <laughs> large and medium bark which in reality is medium and small so there are some chunks in here and there's also quite a lot of fine bark there's also quite a lot of <laughs> unknown rubbish <laughs> which we will proceed to get out as best we can strange you can see well, if you see that close there are some bits of cocoa husk in here and you think how on earth did that get in there well, when I've got a bit of media left over, I, you know, that's perfectly good, I don't waste it. 
so it gets thrown back in one bag or another and I like to keep the cocoa media separate whereas with the bark I don't mind some cocoa husk mixed in with it simply because that's probably what I'm going to do anyway if <laughs> you see what I mean so it doesn't matter does it I think that's the worst of the strange bits of wood and grass and oddities it's, it's, it's things like that that is not bark <laughs> or even I'm not quite sure what that is Anything that looks odd just comes out, you know, it, it, it takes a minute um, you, and you never know what, what that oddity might be and the chances are it's going to be soft whatever it is and it will be the first bit to break down, so take it out, if it's gone, it's gone, it's like that, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but there's two of them, that'll do, it's just, just a quick pick over, just, you know, Old bits that just don't look right. That's that. And then um, we're going to add a fair bit of cocoa husk. Oncidium types like to stay moist, but they like to, when growing, actively growing, they like to stay moist, full stop. But they do like to head towards dryness um, before they get absolutely soaked again. The cocoa husk will allow them to stay wet longer before they need watering, which is a bonus for me. Now, I don't mind if there are some larger bits in this, this time round, um, simply because it's that type of root system, you know, where it doesn't matter so much. Um, I'm getting to the point as well, luckily there's very little repotting left to do, because I'm coming towards the end of this batch of cocoa husk. I have another bag that hasn't been treated yet, and therein lies the problem. I think I need to get on and do the soaking and everything with the bag that I've got left because it's, I've still got the sort of time of year where I can dry it in the sun outside. So it's worth taking advantage of that because once it's dried off, it can be stored, you know. So uh, I think we might get on and do that. Just trying to look at the the mix now. How fine is it? Another bit of that strange stuff. Is there enough cocoa husk mixed in with it? I mean I'm I would be reasonably happy to to pot these oncidiums in small bark with some medium bark mixed in. I'd be happy with that but that would dry incredibly quickly. Um, the cocoa husk will I mean they don't need watering quite so often. It'll hold the moisture a little bit longer and create a nice environment for new roots to get into. I reckon that'll do. There's a lot of strandy bits in here, these sort of long bits of coconut stuff, but for what's going in there, that doesn't matter. Now somebody, I forget who it was, sent me a um, an email with an attachment which was a huge write-up with a lot of science about charcoal and um, adding it to media or in larger chunks using it as a media and I think it's enough for me to come off the fence and actually say that this is useful stuff. I'm not going into it because I still think there's a, an opinion involved here but um, as I said there was a lot of science in that write-up that made sense to me and very very little that didn't you know the the, the, <laughs> the pros and cons the cons really were negligible in comparison to the pros so I shall carry on adding some charcoal in especially as I've already bought it <laughs> just as well you use it I always said I can see no, nothing that says it can do any harm and lots of things that say it does good. So well, that's the way I've always gone with it. That's the, one of the cons. We've got dirty hands. Ow, that water's hot. That's because I've just been running the tap washing the pots. Ugh. Still, 
when you're washing stuff for orchids, if you can get your hands in it, it's not hot enough. Unless they're Roger's hands, which are made of asbestos. <laughs> not even my eldest son, who's pretty sturdy and hardy, can stand temperatures on his hands that I do. How did you put your hands in that washing up water, Dad? That boiling. No, it's not. <laughs> But if it is for you, then it's boiling, you know, that's, but not for me. Right, so that's our mix. Hopefully there's enough for three. I can't see there won't be. Um, no crocking, not this time round. Got three relatively small pots. Oh, I love that pot. I want more of them. I'd love to be able to buy a batch of them. It's the, it's the fact that they're shallow as well as wide. So they allow for quite a bit of growth, but they're not deep so they don't stay wet at the bottom. Now the, the way around that is to crock. Or, like I've said, if you don't want to put large crocking in the bottom, then plant the plant deep. So if the media only comes up to there, it's a shallow pot. If it comes up to there, it's a deep pot. You don't have to have the plant right at the top of the media. It's not compulsory. Right, get the big one done first. with its new growth and it's very large chunky rise and this is like wood here um, so that's that one you can go in the biggest which is that one because that's got the I've chosen that one because it's got the smallest the shallowest air cone I won't say the smallest because it's quite a decent size air cone but it's the shallowest so it's not going to stick up into the roots too much and we'll chuck some in. This is probably one of the first times you've ever seen me not crock the bottom of a pot. And that's because these are small pots. This is going back to my original, you know, thing with Oncidium types. The smaller the pot, the better the root system seems to grow. Come round the back. This is the bit we'll where there's unlikely to be any root growth. So we just need that. We just need some in there basically so that we can push the plant back against it. And then the new growth has got plenty of room to grow into. That's the idea of that. And then this root system can handle a bit of bashing around to a degree. So we can get the media right down in around it. But you, you know, with still with care, without being so silly but I don't want too many air gaps and hopefully this one which is the problem with this one has been it's dried too fast um, probably because it was a drinker when it was growing and um, it sort of set the roots back a bit because they were drying out when they shouldn't have been and, and the reason that was happening <coughs> was it didn't fit into my watering cycle was drying out quicker than the rest of the pots that got watered at the same time. <coughs> so whereas the others were heading towards dryness and almost dry, this one was bone dry and possibly had been for a day or two. And it wasn't doing it any good. So hopefully now with this mix it can settle into the same routine as the rest of the uh, pots. The ordinary pots, that is, not the, not the clay pots. So that's that one. And the new growth is sitting on the media. That bulb is a little wobbly on the rhizome, but you notice it's not wobbling the whole plant. So that can stay as it is. That's one done. I'm going to have a lot left over here. This is the Hamilton Ara, with the growth going up the middle of the plant and lots of little growths around the base. There's a little one there, that's the camera, another little one there, and this one that's pushing on, and we've got root growth. So it didn't matter that the old roots were a bit, a bit sad. And this is going in there, and it's going in quite deep. But quite a shallow root system, and I just want that so I'm just trying to twist it a little bit so that because I've got a new growth there, there and the one we can see, it's got to go like that so that all of those new growths have got a place to be. 
Oh, hang on. I wonder why there's something touching my feet. So I'm uh, <laughs> knocking the media over the edge here because it's a bit full. Now we had an aerial route on this, which I am going to tuck down in the pot. It might snap. It might, no it didn't. I think that's going to make it. That almost doubles the size of the root system, that single root, because it was aerial before. Now it might object to getting buried and die anyway, but it's got to be worth a try, isn't it? I'm going a little bit more gentle with these roots because they're brittle. And I'm going to have to put media just over those tiny little new growths. Otherwise the existing root new growth with its root system will be too high. But they hopefully are going to grow on relatively quickly now. So uh, this should pick up. It's got a, that was in stale media basically so that was inhibiting its growth. When those two little tiny new growths come up above the media, I might be able to top it up a bit, but that will do for now. That's okay now. Ooh, we did mix up a lot, didn't we? Far too much. I might have to go in the grow room, go to my notes, and have a look and see if there's anything else that could go in this mix. Because otherwise I'm going to have to dry it out before I can put it back in that bag. You don't, don't ever put away wet media in a bag. It's just asking for rot. And, well, mould more than anything, which then gets in your pots, especially if you don't notice it. Right, and then we've got these two little species Oncidiums that are going to go back in the pot they came out of. Um, not bad roots. I've certainly potted up Oncidiums with worse, but no real effort with new growths on this plant at the moment. There's, it looks like what might be one there but I don't actually think it is. No it's not, it's just a bit of sheath. So these are going to have to sit with the existing root system for a bit. So uh, we'll see what happens. All right. so I'm going to put them like that so that the two new growths are here, the two latest growths I'll say, they're not new growths. Well, they're this year's growths, let's put it that way. And then push the whole of the rest of the plant up against the pot so that it's most likely new growths are gonna come out from the latest growth and that way they've got plenty of room. So the latest growths are gonna be in the middle because the new growths could come out right at the very side. So it will give them room. So come away from the bit that's gonna be the back yeah, so that you can get some media down behind. And then you've got something to push the plant against. Like so. Right. When you've got two pieces, keep checking the height. They need to stay together, otherwise you end up with one buried to make the other one right, or one sat too high to make the other one right. So keep them together as far as the, you know, the height of the media is. Keep them together, keep your eye on it, keep looking, checking. Now I'm actually gonna lift these plants up a little bit now so that I can get a bit more media in. I want them just sitting on it, not in it. Personally, I think the, they were potted a little deep, um, given that the sheaths and everything weren't cleaned off when they were repotted. I mean, these have come from a growing nursery. You know, you've got 20 plants to do and another tray full of 30 plants to do and you've got till lunchtime to get this bit of work done. You can't spend the sort of time that we, as home grower type people, can do. I mean, I can spend half an hour doing this one plant if I want. If I was Arthur at Burnham's and I spent half an hour on a plant, 
I'd probably be working somewhere else or not working at all. <laughs> I've heard Sarah say, haven't you got any work to do? I think she was joking. Because I like chatting to Arthur, but unfortunately, Arthur does. If he's there, then he's supposed to be working, basically. He's not there for decoration or entertainment. He's there to work. So, right, I'll do. We're a little bit wobbly. I think I'll pop some steaks in next to those two. And lots left over, but that's the three that we got out of the pot. So, uh, yeah. Job done, and that's... There is now nothing in red in my notes in the Oncidium section. Those were the last ones. There's still some in red in other places, which I'm now going to go and have a look at. <laughs> right, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.